there are four billion people on the planet earth these four billion people have d n a that is very very nearly identical but there are places that are different by using the places that are the same sort of as a handle or like a footprint or like a like a place to grab on we can identify the places that are different and tell people apart based upon differences in their DNA. Let's go straight to an example. Chromosome 2 includes a gene for thyroid peroxidase. Everybody has this gene. The gene is necessary for proper functioning of the thyroid gland. Everybody has it. It is on chromosome 2. Chromosome 2 has about 44 million bases at about approximately 14.5 million bases on the short arm of chromosome 44 is found the thyroid peroxidase gene. The thyroid peroxidase gene is about 128,000 bases long. There are 15 introns, so that the thyroid peroxidase gene is mostly introns. It has some exons. For our purposes here, we are interested in intron number six. Intron number six is a place that has been noticed to be a variable size. The intron number six in the thyroid peroxidase gene is one of these places that's variable. It's one of these places that's not the same from person to person. So how do we look at this particular spot in the DNA? Well, we have the handles on either side, which are the same. All we need to do is make a primer on the one side pointing in and a primer on the other side pointing in. So these primers will go back and forth across this place, amplify this one spot in the DNA. Just this one spot will get amplified. We need a name. Let's use Mike. We take Mike's DNA and we subject it to polymerase chain reaction using our pair of primers. And we get a band. The band tells us how long intron number six is for Mike. But there's a catch to it, and I think it's kind of cool. Mike, chromosome number two, Mike has two of these. So he actually gets two bands. Because the band from his, the chromosome from his father is ne not necessarily going to be the same as the chromosome from his mother. In, in intron number six. So he gets two bands. Okay, we take Mary, do the exact same set of primers on Mary, run the polymerase chain reaction, and we get two different bands for Mary. Again, one from her mother and one from her father. And there's a good probability that they'll not be the same, the same as the ones that came from Mike. So the specificity of what we see from Mike and the specificity of what we see from Mary is based upon the primers that we had picked. The primers are about 15 to 20 bases long, which means the specificity is 4 to the 15 to 4 to the 20. It's, it's, it's a pretty specific spot we're looking for. Through the 1980s and the 1990s, laboratories throughout the world found hundreds of these sites where a pair of primers will capture a variable length piece of DNA. The FBI is looking at this research and, and seeing obvious implications for their activities. In 1997, they picked 15 pairs of primers and called it the Combined DNA Index System, the CODIS system, which is in, the, which is in place to this day, sort of as a, a somewhat arbitrary definition of the DNA fingerprint. They picked these 15 pairs of primers based upon a number of factors. One of them is that they wanted a primer on every chromosome because the math comes out better if they sort independently on different chromosomes. They want amplicons which have a differing sizes. They want some big ones and some little ones. They want primers that'll work first time every time with no ambiguity whatsoever. In other words, they want pairs of primers that are perfect for their performance. And political considerations were very much part of it. There are people making money in the DNA fingerprinting business, and there are people pressuring them and say, use our 
Use our, our primers or use our primers. Patent considerations came into it. But in 1997, they sort of nailed the whole thing down with the CODIS system. And very shortly after that, the Europeans and the rest of the world kind of followed suit. They don't do it exactly the way we do it. But, but the, the databases are comparable. DNA fingerprinting. Fingerprinting is a good word for it. We have fingerprints on our fingers. You don't talk about them on any other level other than the fact that they're different for everybody. Well, I have good fingerprints and you don't. You know, It isn't like that. Fingerprints are different. They don't really have a lot of meaning beyond that. I think that that applies to the, um, the DNA fingerprint as well. It's different. It's, it's different. The DNA fingerprint is different from person to person, but it really doesn't have any meaning outside of the fact that it's different. And, and finally, like any analytical chemistry technique, the key to DNA fingerprinting is in its reproducibility. If we do DNA fingerprinting on Mike 200 times, we're going to get the same pattern 200 times. I think there's an argument that in a way, the, how it works isn't, isn't really as important as the fact that it's reproducible.